you know, might go off or I don't know. What kind of practical jokes do you play? Well, with my new chemistry set, thanks to Brie Larson, her, um, I do like to uh, make stink bombs. Hello. Hi. Listen. Hi, everyone. Scotty. Scotty, how yeah, are bud. you? It's been so long since we've, since we've been here to to talk about Star Wars. How have you been? Oh, sorry. I was confused. We were, we've been no. talking Ghostbusters for for, yeah. for for a very long time. And now we are back to the Star Wars discussions besides Bad Batch. We've been covering Bad right. Batch. Right. And I'm glad to be back, dude. We're talking about something that came out last week. So we're a little behind on a yeah. few things. and. People joining in right now, I'm so glad to see you here. Make sure you leave a comment and share this, you know, maybe, maybe leave right. a like. But um, Jerry, Acolyte trailer, man, uh, this dropped last Tuesday? If I'm mistaken, was it last Tuesday? I think so. It was a long time ago. Listen, in between now and then, I've, I've had a lot of uh, been a lot of existential dread between now and then, just like just with life and everything. And so, you yeah. know, I mean, listen. It's it's crazy. We've got acolyte coming out very soon, and actually, oh my you mean, God, yeah. can I teach you? Can I teach you a breathing exercise? Yeah, everything to help with existential dread. Everyone, yeah, out please, there? can I do that real quick? Yes, let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Okay. <clears throat> so what you do is you uh, so you take in a long, uh, deep breath. Okay, and then you you let it all out at once, uh, like this. And I call the uh, here we go. Here we go. I call this uh, I call this the uh, uh, the existential vent. So here we go. Okay, I'll try that. There you go. The existential vent. Go for it. Like go for that. it. I feel pretty good. You feel good? You feel immediately better. Yeah, it does. It feels kind of nice. Yeah. Everyone, everyone do that in the chat. Make sure you type this out. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Hooter! Oh, I don't know what that was. Sorry, I was channeling Hooter! Our, our Captain EO <laughs> episode from three years ago. Hooter! Go check that out. Hooter! Hooter! We know you're I... not here just for the wings. <laughs> oh, look, just heard Jerry with Kim Mabzog. Jerry, where were you just guessing? Hey, what's up, Jorge? Surprise yeah, no, so, so, yeah, go check out. So, you right now, if you want to just leave, if you're tired of this, you can just go watch The Blathering with Kim Mabzog, which is a uh... lot better of a broadcasting program. Uh... <laughs> Um, you can go watch that with Ken Napsock, and that's a lot more of a wholesome family program, probably. Um, but uh, um, yeah. Anyway, so I was over there talking about my UFO experiences because um, I'm a I'm a dirty uh, you know uh, weirdo. Oh. <laughs> I'm a weird, yeah. I'm a I'm a filthy filthy Republican weirdo. Oh man, what's up, Buck? What's up? I'm in a weird, funny mood. But anyway, yeah, good evening. Uh, it was look, it was a lot hey, of fun. I appreciate boy, you having me on. Birthday boy, birthday boy, birthday boy. Birthday boy coming birthday up. Daddy, birthday boy. 55 pies, 55 pies, 55 pies, 55 pies. What? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do a fun face. <laughs> let's do that face for Brian. Here we go. Brian. <laughs> In a week. Sorry, in Holly. Week. I'm sure I, I know if Holly's watching with you, but I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, in a week. In a week. It's in not week. yet. It's in a week. It's in, in a, a week. week. But man, damn, does that man look good? He does. Ruined. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I, sorry. I, I ruined his birthday of a week from now. We ruined it a okay. week ahead. Of time. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. 
Yeah. Why have we been doing that? We did this. We were hanging out last night after a bad bench call. And we just kept <laughs> doing that to each other. So the acolyte. The acolyte's coming out yeah, very real, soon. Real. Uh, yeah, no, it's my actually. Uh, actually, listen, it's my twenty twenty fifth. I can finally uh, get a car. I can rent a car on my own. Ooh, wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so last week two things happened. Okay, two very stressful things: Ooh. acolyte trailer, and then on Friday the Phantom Menace tickets went on sale, and your boy bought seven, but he plans on going to fifteen. I'll be sneaking the oh, theaters. Snap. How many did you buy? How many did you buy? Zero right now. I'm going to wait okay, till okay. tomorrow. I'm probably going to buy. I'm probably going to buy two tickets to nice. one showing for me and my lovely daughter. Because wow, I, wow. again, I'm going to be dadding that weekend. And it's going to be fun. And, but it's going to be a fun weekend. Uh, with some, but we're going to go watch. We're gonna go watch the Phantom Menace in Dolby. Now, now when you drop her, so not off, only though. is her first, only her, not only her first theater experience with Star Wars movie, it will be in Dolby. That'll be. <laughs> it'll be in Dolby Atmos. How many people have left? As a... <laughs> we might get more people show up. Maybe we're doing something right. We're we're Dolby. Uh, but uh, oh, ultimate Glizzy challenge. <laughs> <laughs> the acolyte we are gonna no, talk but, about the acolyte the reason why i bring up the phantom menace screening is because Ooh. i don't know and you're in your city it could be playing monday mine's playing monday through thursday the week yeah. in after so like i'm gonna see it maybe a couple nights those uh those nights but what's important is the reason why i bring it up is because at the very end of the credits uh, you're going to get a preview for the Acolyte. So there is reason right. to be able to sub celebrate both both things at once. And this is going to be, in terms of... Uh, I can't, I, thank you. Thank, thank you for your patronage. You. Yes. Thank you. We're, we're going to work Listen, on if you're it. A if, you're a Patri if you're a Patreon, you get a lot more of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Honest to God. Honest to God is here. Oh! Oh, Zillow Ray, Zillow Ray. <laughs> but no, uh, Sean Room, that's gonna be freaking sick, dude. You get to hang out with the that's gonna Sean be so Room. fun. That's give Shawnee, awesome. give Shawnee a big hug from us, okay? You know, he he met a uh, he ask him um, first, ask him first. You, you know you who know. Sean Room met? You know, who Sean Room met who's that? You know, who he met. Jade Gall. Oh, no, Jade Gall. <laughs> I'm sweating. Ooh, Papa Molly, I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever said her name Hold like on. that. We got to center ourselves, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jade <laughs> <laughs> but you so okay so the all of us who are going to everyone in this chat right now is going to go watch the phantom menace we already know it of course um we're to. gonna go watch that we're going to stay all the way through the filthy filthy dirty credits mm. and we're gonna watch that mm, stanky you are so trailer. bomb bad yep and i don't look, know why i'm being so much like this but it, but i but i think it's important to say this show besides the Phantom Menace and it tells the Jedi will now be the earliest right. thing on screen in terms of the star Wars timeline, which is within yes, itself in actually action. super exciting. Well, so like even from the, even well, from the actually image, technically, technically it is uh young Jedi adventures because that takes ooh. place like before the, everything goes to shit. <laughs> That's true. And apparently in this show, so. everything goes to <laughs> Everything yeah. has gone to shit, and it going is just shit. going to. I mean, we are we are into the septic tank. Uh, yes. In, in a in a in a in a force using way of speaking. Of course. Um, 
Yes, yes. Yeah, so we're going to yeah, do now. Right, we're gonna actually, that's right. We're going to watch the trailer all the way through because Jerry and I have not watched it together. Then once we watch it all the way through, we are then going to, of course, break down some things we saw from it. Then we're going to look at mm-hmm. the characters from the show and really take a second to analyze, you know, new characters, the, the already given descriptions of these characters. So there's a lot to look forward to, obviously, with the show. But let's, uh, you want to check out this trailer real quick, Jerry? Let's do that. Not really. Yeah, let's do it. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. Now, I'm not going to lie. Uh, when I first watched this, it kind of put me on like a Jedi kick and like, I've been wanting to like make oh, a yeah. short story for a long time, like a, like film a short film. And like, this made me want to start writing. And this past week I've been like actually adding things to like this document I've been thinking about. So like, right. I, this really inspired me. I was like, this, this show's going to do a lot for my, my, my psyche. And I think it will for you too. But let's, well, this, uh, like, again, my most anticipated, uh, project since it was announced, yeah. Um. And again, since reading the High Republic and everything, and um, man, just the vibes in this trailer. Um, I guess we can we can gush about this like after and everything. But I showed, but I remember I showed my dad the poster before oh, the, nice. the trailer came out. Yeah. And he was like really super interested. He was like, "Oh, that's, that's awesome! Wow, that's different. Yeah. That's different than it has been." Um. So, but yeah. Anyway, let's let's watch this thing, man. I, I can't Here wait. We go. Close your eyes. It's my little buddy. I don't want to put in my pocket. Can deceive you. Love it. We must not trust them. God. So good and cool hearing that from a different perspective. Tell me what comes into your mind. Life. Balance. I see fire. God, chills, man. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. What happened? I sensed darkness. Good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. What is that? Man, God bless. So, okay. Uh, when I first saw it, my first thoughts were obviously love that we're going to be at the Jedi Temple in a different era. That was like the first right. thing that ran through my mind. That got me pumped. I was like, yes, finally a new view of a familiar, a familiar place. You know what I mean? We might get old Coruscant. Yeah. We may get like really, really, you know, the Phantom Menace kind of feels very grand in terms of its depiction of Coruscant. Like, right. Ah, man, I love it. Uh your eyes can we deceive. We make it like even even more Art Deco, you know. Yes. Like, you know, oh you know, kind of God. Yeah. 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 So I'm I'm a uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very very excited for the visual aspect alone because this looks different even than, than the Mandalorian, and we'll we'll scrub through this and kind of give our our thoughts on it. But like like I love this. We got creatures in this, you know. And everyone's like, okay, everyone's like, well, this show's gonna be like Andor, and I'm. Sure, you can have those thoughts. You're entitled to your feelings against any of these shows. But I think to me, and, and for me, this is going to be that perfect combination of creature feature weird, force weird, and the Andor, the way it's shot, the seriousness. But it's already pulled. Yeah. You already got Kong Fu fighting in a right. Star Wars. You know what I mean? It's Right, exactly. Well, and I mean, like, again, Andor was really meant to the, like what you're really supposed to get from that is the absence of the force yes. you know and so i mean like again you can have the se- and we know it's i mean listen the the poster had blood <laughs> on a lightsaber right mm-hmm. and a smear of blood and i mean like th- that's very violent imagery that we've not really ever gotten from any star yeah. wars project before and so um 
you can have all the weirdness and the maturity to it, right? I mean, it, it, from what it seems, this is going to be almost like a, a noir uh, murder mystery yep. kind of show is what it feels like. Which so, is great. Again, the, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Which is different. Yeah, and uh, it, it's dealing with And Jedi. there's a weird little guy eating noodles. There's a weird little guy eating noodles, too, yep. which is great. So yes. it's got everything. It's got all of it. And also, there's a cool, there's a cool thing everyone's been acknowledging, and I think it's a higher public thing as well. There is like outside attire, and then there's like Jedi Temple attire, and you can see yes. that there's some interesting things going on. Like they're in their like kind of a New Hope, uh, Phantom Mist clothes here, and then there's the look. There you go. That was one shot where you can clearly see it being a different style robe, uh, tunic. Right. Yeah, look, we'll we'll go back to that. The but like the whites and gold. Yes, the whites uh, and which gold. are very very prevalent. It's so. Oh, there was a, someone in a white robe right uh -huh. there. Um, yeah, no, and I think uh, the Wookiee Klanaka, right, is Klanaka. the name of the Wookiee. Mm -hmm. Um, gold uh, robes on him as well, or them? Excuse me, I'm not sure yeah. uh, exactly who they are yet. But uh, you know, and. It's yeah, exciting. It's exciting to see oh. this stuff in live action. Um, and you get Vanestra Rowe right there. And this the, looks like this to me looks like it could Vinestra. be the uh, the actual chamber of the Jedi Council. You know what I mean? Which would be so. Yeah. Oh, well, my look at God. that like actual tapestry, by the yes. way, on the yeah. wall back there, which is something you don't necessarily see in the prequels. No, like not that. at all. Like it, it feels more uh, feels more uh, medieval a little bit. Like this whole which is kind of what they were wanting to do, which is kind of what they wanted to do with the High Republic is that what if you had the Knights of the Round Table, the Jedi were more like the yes. Knights of the Round Table. Yes. Yeah, so I was thinking this too, watching this. There's a couple of very interesting things in terms of like visuals. Like the, this in this scene right. alone, we've got, let me make sure I get his name correctly. I'm trying to get the character sheets pulled up right now because there already are on the, uh, on the data bank area of the website you can already pull up these characters so soul right here Lots soul of has entry. short hair in this one right right and right. It, that that's interesting alone and then you can also see that we've got carrie ann moss playing the role of indara and she has a different kind of hairstyle and look so i i there may be some flash forwards there may be some flashbacks right. uh <clears throat> but like this whole scene we know there's a jedi killer on the loose we know that it is not saying if it's Sith or anything, it's an assassin that is going to be hunting Jedi. And the Jedi are probably very shocked by this because they've had a lot of peace right. recently. So not peace. I'm sorry. The Nihil haven't been anything peaceful, but well, we, and we, we didn't, we don't know exactly what's going on with the Nihil during this period yes. and stuff like that. Like, I, you know, maybe they've, they've taken care of the threat. Honestly, these, so these, they, they build these characters. I forget her name, mother, mother, something. Oh yeah. Uh, and it is a coven of witches and the name and the, 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 uh, the, the tattoos or, or paint, whatever she's got on her head. And, uh, all of it is very, um, uh, was it mother Anissa? Uh, yeah, an an Anasea maybe Anasea. Uh, but anyway, they've got a very um, uh, path of the open hand vibe, which is yeah spoilers okay. uh, for the High Republic. That is the group. It's like a cult, a religious group that is where the Nihil kind of are birthed from. Oh, um, okay. And so this feels like a very uh, like maybe this is what's left of the path of the open hand. Yeah, or something like that um, would be very interesting. They're wearing the sim the same colors and everything that they do in the books. Yeah, um, those characters really interest me. I guess is what I I'm agree. To say. No, I agree, and I think it's important too to acknowledge that we know very little about what appears to be maybe even our main character May. So I, I don't I, right. I don't know. Like May was the focal point of this entire trailer and Soul. So I'm thinking, yes, if yeah. I were to look at this, I'm thinking May was trained by Soul because they are. There's already behind the scenes photos of them together that was like mm -hmm. the first thing posted about Acolyte like a year and a half ago. So like, I, I wonder, right? I, I think I think maybe it's a, a Padawan fallen from grace or something. Yes, kind of like possibly. That? Okay. Maybe okay. maybe even um, like we haven't got 
I'm not going to say dark Jedi, but like we, because <laughs> it'll summon some dumbass. But uh, like you, uh, you have a Jedi that maybe, ha- may- how about this? This is a weird plot twist. Maybe this character was like adjacent to a Jedi in her life. And like maybe she is seeking revenge for something Soul did or I don't know. There, there's a lot right. to be said. And this right here, I don't know if you first saw it and you thought of this. I thought Octo like immediately. I know that it won't be the case. It, I got my, it just probably feels not. Like it, though. Feels it, like d- it, though. a lot of people were saying that it, it is very. Yeah. It feels very Octo adjacent. Yeah, it, it would be. And it would be interesting again because like Brian said it. Too, I, right? It's yeah. this isn't like this isn't like thousands of years before. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Phantom Menace. It's like a hundred. Uh, what is it? A hundred years or hundred years? Hundred. Which again, a century before. So yeah. maybe they like used them more. And we get, we don't really know how much they knew of Octo uh, mm-hmm. in you know in the pre in the prequels and things like that. Yeah. But you know, it could be it could be. I like the line of uh, this is about power and who's allowed to wield it. Yes. Uh, or who's and who's the Jedi allowed, have a lot of power. They have a ton they of do. power. And that's something that most well, people Well, and, are... and we've got to see what kind of power they exert over mm-hmm. things, um, maybe after the Nihil conflict. Things like, you know, yeah. like, uh, it, it seems like the Nihil conflict that's going on in the books is going to lead to, again, lead to where they're more of a police force, more of a... Because they're not really that yeah. in the books. And so um, maybe this, again, will be the final straw here um we'll have to see it very well could be and, and everyone keeps bitching there's so much bitching about this trailer that annoys me that at no point does a dark side user or someone with a red lightsaber it, like equivalent you know i'm sorry equate to it being a sith you know uh, like plo- right. and it's also keati how Mundi many who well, says that line who trusts keati yeah. Mundi? he's a keati Mundi. keati Mundi has like a harem as yeah. stuff and we like who who knows what like if he got that legally um uh-huh. but Dude. you know but like i mean listen uh people talking about like oh this breaks canon things like that like uh well, i guess if even if it is a sith it, it probably mm-hmm. is yeah because i mean well for one thing that would be huge because we haven't mm-hmm. had that since the sequel trilogy you yeah. know um yeah, so it's been a few years yeah but <clears throat> If it is a Sith, why does it break canon that some that a handful of Jedi encounter something like that? And yeah. you know, you, you you could have like they could deny it. Like people could mm-hmm. if, if some of them survive, you could have the rest rest of them going like, I don't know. I think this was just some kind of like copycat or something like that. Like, sure, you know. Well, Mickey Adi Mundi is like going to be a kid in this, and he's going to be like the Sith have been extinct for a millennia. <laughs> no, I think you it's know? important too because in the Phantom Menace, you know, he doesn't even believe Qui Gon after encountering one. So, like, yeah, maybe yeah, it's up. just this dogmatic, like, well, they don't exist because there's so many of us. When no, that's the whole yeah, point. Yeah, they were you, they killed themselves like years exactly, ago. Yeah, exactly, kind of exactly, and like. Yeah, there's some very striking visuals. Like this scene with the fire is interesting because in yeah. this scene, this little girl says, "What do you see?" and she sees fire. So I like see fire. See, that by the way, that was such a powerful uh just like like I see life or mm-hmm. light, I see fire is just such mm-hmm. a man, um it, it's just this this show is going to be it's it's going to be Andor for the Jedi. Yeah, I is agree. This is going to be, but I also think it's going to be that for them. A little, little Mandalorian, a little spiritual, a little, a little weird, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, Brennan, I'm super excited. Oh, Brennan, is- us too, man. Yeah, for real. I just think it's so important as a fan base to kind of let go of our preconceived notions of something and let it exist. Absolutely. The whole entire. The beginning of this trailer is don't trust your eyes. And we've got people that watch this trailer and immediately want to pick fights about the dumbest shit. Like, it doesn't matter yet. The show isn't even out. Why are you pitting things against each other? Like, you, it's so foolish. It's like... You there needs to be a way. Oh, Pride Month's gonna be amazing. Pride, Pride Month is gonna God be lit. Bless. Holy For cow. Real. But um, yeah, I'm just I'm watching this and I'm like, I don't understand 
how someone could watch this and immediately find negativity in it and 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 maybe you know i guess have spite for something like this literally you get matrix you get carrie and moss in the star wars show like there's so much yeah. to be loved i guess here we all we always celebrate things Jerry and I have always been right. about celebrating Star Wars and the culture around Star Wars, but I have a very hard time watching this and being like, oh man, they're going to ruin it. Like, this, what? Listen, if that's your uh, reason, if, if you watch this trailer and you say, uh, oh, this is going to ruin everything, I think that you have uh, some things in your head that you there's there's i think you got some some bigotry you got to let go of uh because oh, i think that i i think there's other reasons that you don't like this yeah frankly. and i'm not saying like because listen like not everything is everyone's cup of tea and that's pro that will absolutely be true with this mm -hmm. but most of the vocal people that you see out there being like oh this is gonna break everything it's gonna suck you know things like that it's mainly people parroting youtubers who are trying to play on those dog whistles and things like that. Exactly. Again, um, this is a, an LGBTQ plus a ran show like the, yes. like the, the show runner, uh, Leslie Hedlund. Hedlund. So yes. Um, uh, her Jerry, wife is Netflix? plays Vernestra Rowe. Do you, do I you mean, have Netflix Jerry? Do you have Netflix? I think you do. I, I knew I do. I need it. to watch Russian doll and everything. I love, here. I love everything about it. I love Natasha. Dude, <laughs> you know, dude and, tight, but, uh, yeah, I got tight to. 30 minute episodes. I watched it when it first came out in 2019. I think it's tight. Like yeah. 30 episodes. There's eight episodes and it's brilliant writing. It's hilarious, but it's also got such a good, like, um, I guess subtext to it because it's like groundhog's day, but like, way more severe right you know what i mean right and told a little bit better than the idea of groundhog's day so like yeah season one is is perfection i have not seen season i'll have two, to check it out but she wrote and did all that series and if anything an indication of what this humor could be like or what this even this like how weird they can get with the force like they can do some awesome stuff man and uh Absolutely. so can, we can speculate on this i think this is going to be may or someone maybe I mean I don't know the the hand the hand is is a is a darker skin tone but like that could be a fake out it could be a glove that I just can't see I don't know I just I I was so interested in seeing what they could do with this because it's like a force they're throwing a lightsaber that is like one of the first really beautiful right. lightsaber throws we've gotten because we only get that in Return of the Jedi I'm pretty yeah. sure yeah I think Return of the Jedi is the only real lightsaber throw we get. That's like an actual throw and catch. But yeah. Buck uh, says Yord. 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 Yord Which, is. Yeah. Me... That's, I would say it's the, the, if you go back a couple of frames here, uh, his character is. Yeah. This guy uh, standing next to. Yes. Yeah. Yord right there. So Yord would have and a would, red. The, the half, the half Thielen character as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember her name. We're so good at this. Um, oh, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jackie um, was also X twenty three, I believe, and um, yes, and, they were. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and oh god, what's it called? Uh, Logan. <laughs> Logan. They film Logan Our brains in, like, are fried after town. Ghostbusters month. <laughs> after go after Ghostbusters <laughs> month. Go that Ghostbusters month. Uh, so yeah, and so the characters. Let's get to the characters actually, because that's actually pretty awesome. So, uh, Indara. This is the description. Master Indara is a Jedi master of great physical and mental skill. That's just like the most, we can't really tell you, you know, there's, we can't yes. give you that information. People are saying, people are saying that Master and Dara, very skillful. They're saying, that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. Ah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what they're saying. But, um, and Dara, and I like that they have the height. Right Lyra, Lyra from his dark materials and stuff. Yes. Like so yeah, Jackie, um, yes, uh, Daphne Keen. a Wookiee Jedi. Is a loner who lives a solitary life. I like this. I like that we've got kind of like a, but kind of a sad Wookie. That'd be badass. That's what I want. I want a sad. Well, even Wookie. like they've got the uh, the shaved sides of the head and everything. Yes. which I, I love and everything yeah. like that. You know, they got you a top knot. A Wookie with a top knot. You I should, should do, do that. that. I'll try yeah. that. Try that out. Yeah, tell me in the Yord. chat. Should I do a top knot. Yord has the biggest description of them all. A Yord, a Jedi Knight and Guardian from the Jedi Temple, is an overachiever <laughs> and a rule follower. He needs to be by the book Jedi, and oh, I'm sorry. He need his need to be a by the book Jedi can cloud his mind. Ooh. These are also uh, just like 
they're juicy. Like all these they're descriptions very are very juicy. juicy. Like and this, usually this this show is just like again. There's no characters that we've in, encountered aside from again. If you've read the books, Vernestra Rowe, probably yeah. there's a chance Yoda or Yaddle shows up in this thing. Uh, yeah. Hell, there's a chance Yarl Poof might be in it. Uh, yeah, boy, he's, he's kicking around. He's kicking around. He is. <laughs> so is the big uh, so, salamander guy. What's the big salamander guy? Salamander uh, guy. Oh, the snake guy. Uh, yeah. uh, oh my god. Jared uh, the Dark Jedi would be pissed with us right now because he knows all. Yeah, this I know. Yeah, we listen. We listen. This is how much we love Star Wars. We can't remember any of the Jedi Council's names. Um, Santa Claus Snake Man. <laughs> someone's gonna someone's gonna pop off in the chat, man. Yeah, man. Anyway, pop off in the chat. So Opo Rancisus. Opo Rancisus. Opo Rancisus. Yes, I imagine that's how he talks. Soul's description is great. Master Soul is a wise, higher respected, powerful Jedi Master, strong in the ways of the Force, who is going through emotional conflict. But I, li I like this. I like these descriptions because we usually get these in like an Entertainment Weekly um, like update. Remember that? Like when the Force Awakens came yeah. out, like we got the trailer, then we got like character descriptions of each character from the trailer. This is different. StarWars.com is obviously taking the reins on this and making this their priority to put out information, which is awesome. Absolutely. Um, yes. Mother Anasea. And I say is the leader of a coven of witches who value their independence and preservation of their beliefs and powers. So, Jerry, after reading all these descriptions, we haven't gotten to May yet. May is May gets swept up in a sinister mystery, one that puts her in the center of conflict in a, unexpected ways. So after reading all these descriptions and talking about all these things and looking at it, what aspect of the High Republic are you expecting to actually be – implemented in this show because everyone is very excited about that and i'm a high public guy mm -hmm. I, i've read the first book i liked it but it's not my cup of tea yet I'm willing to change right. um so the reason i say that is because what what aspects of this are resonating with you high republic wise high republic wise is just there's so there is such a an air of optimism in the jedi uh, in the High Republic, but yeah. there is just so much of a fog of darkness around them that, that surrounds them very quickly uh, in the series. Yeah, and so the, and I think that this is going to be them kind of a little jaded, maybe after. Uh, and again, we don't know what happens with uh, um, uh, you know the Nihil um, or you know any of that kind of conflict, and so yeah. uh, maybe Marky on Row. Marky on Rome might be dead. We don't know what's going on. Yeah, at this point you right don't now. know. That's um, true. But but you know, I think the big thing that I I know a lot of uh High Republic fans are gonna be looking for is Vernestra Rowe to use her light whip. Mm. Her lightsaber to watch that thing turn into a light whip. Like I, it could be so cool if done right. You, I you wonder. Know? That's a risk. That's going to be a weird thing that could visually not work, but I am I am willing to hope it works. And then you know, if they put the time into it, it'll work fine. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. I have no doubt it's going to look uh, super badass uh, I, whenever I, whenever she actually when she like hits the switch and that lightsaber goes <laughs> and ooh. just collapses and she like whips it around her head. Uh, just I mean, come on, man. It's going to be great. But so, yeah, no and. So I think that what's continuing from the higher public again is that you're going to have these maybe jaded uh, Jedi uh, say that five times fast, um, really <laughs> just, you know, trying to be optimistic in a world that is becoming ever darker around yeah. them. Yeah. I would, uh, I would hope, you know, with this show that they do make deeper connections to that era because then it would get people reading. And I mean that. I think reading is super important, especially for this really well thought out era of new Star Wars canon that is exploring right. an era which had never been explored. Project Luminous, man. That was an incredible announcement and an incredible thing to look and, and get excited about. I love Light of the Jedi. There's just some things that I haven't hooked me back in. And this show very well could be the thing that's like, oh, wait a minute. This is a lot of what the High Republic's about. And I'm just missing out on it. Then all my friends are right and I'm just wrong. I mean, I'll admit it. You know what I mean? There there are some things you're all like, Scotty, you'd love, you'd love. And I just haven't taken the time because I can't. To me, I watch it. I'm like, maybe I can't connect with these characters because I don't know what they look like. But this show could then flesh out 
and put them on screen, some of them, and I'll right. go, oh, shit. Okay, now I know what they're like in this era of the story or the timeline, so it'll give me greater appreciation of what it could be, you know, um, right. what it could be in the book itself. So, yeah. And the way I've always kind of thought about um, the High Republic as, as something that I think that you would – at least once you got into a little deeper would enjoy yeah. is that it is the prequel to the phantom menace See, it is how we get yeah to that point how um, we end which up I, there. I, I again to to me and and some and a lot of people is um very thrilling very enthralling mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. so but See, uh, but anyway, no, I think I think yeah, absolutely, you can do a back. I think lots of people will do a back uh, swing on this and just go so back and check out things. Obviously, Star Wars put out their own stuff. I know, uh, I know, a couple other websites did as well. I believe Variety did. Uh, but I was intrigued most by this IGN article because I don't know how they got IGN's weird. IG when I was growing up was like the website you would go to for video game sheets. I don't know if that was the same for you. Like that was the right. site. Like that's that's all Absolutely. I use it for. But now IGN's kind of this weird multimedia outlet for reviews. And there's a couple of cool things that Leslie Headland mentions in, in this interview with IGN. She was talking about uh shows that inspired the Acolyte. And she says Clone Wars inspired the Acolyte a lot by being an a lot well, but also the Clone Wars inspired the Acolyte a lot being inspired by Night Sisters. We don't have any Night Sisters in the show, but being inspired by them, being inspired by Asad's Ventress, my favorite episode is The Wrong Jedi, and I definitely took inspiration from that. So if you haven't watched uh, The Wrong Jedi in a minute, God. <laughs> that, I mean, very deceiving. You know, the whole episode is about, yeah. the whole thing is about, you know, losing faith in, a, in an establishment that you once thought was your everything. And, and Ahsoka is the prime example of a character that has to kind of come to terms with maybe she doesn't represent this area anymore. And she has to make these decisions to leave the Jedi and uh, obviously why she's not remembered of the Sith, but like there it's, it's done in a far more meaningful way than most people expect from an animated TV series. Right. And so like, I love this. She says, we we kind of run the gambit. Let's reference Return of the Jedi here. Let's reference the holding cell based on the Clone Wars episodes here. Let's have a cantina. So I'm like, she's, uh, I'm, I'm going to sound a little wrong, me for saying this. She's not like JJ who just watched the OT and said, I like it. And then he says, and yeah, they're like, yeah, hey, it's all good. It's all good, bro. But like, it's not like, you know, it's the whole, good. we're not going to mention the Koreans and we're going to put Jar Jar in the desert. This right. is very much, no, 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 no. This is the kind of the Ryan Johnson approach where I Ryan says in an interview, like I did watch the Mortis arc. I mean, there's like things that are said yeah. out loud. You know what I mean? Like he, that he, he like it's and again, I think JJ did well with what he did for the most yes, part. Of course. Um, and again, jury may be out for you for uh Rise of Skywalker. It's not my favorite, but whatever. Yeah. Um when you have someone like a filmmaker like Ryan Johnson and Leslie Headland, you have those people marinate themselves in the world yeah it shows and the the love and the care uh comes through and they're like i want to tell a story in this universe let me just kind of take every facet of it whether it's my thing or not and see what yeah. this universe is about and let me put a story into this that is um again this is looking wholly original and oh yeah again, but but on, with that but while still again maintaining like you said like the you know, the weird uh, off the wall alien uh, cool fun factor, right? Like we're going to, we're yeah. still going to have like the, the star Wars weirdness in there, of course. but they're really going to push it. You know, they're going to push the bar. I, I feel, I, I hope they do. At least. See, and I, I, I mean, I have nothing but faith in her. In you got to think too. She is, I think closer to your age. If I'm not mistaken. Let me look her up. Yeah. I think, so think y'all are uh, almost near the same age. Hold I was going to say, yeah, because like I I was devouring, me and my friends were devouring. Uh, She's older than you. She is okay. older than you, Ooh, about still. like seven years older than you. She is. She was born in 1980. So the reason right. I say that is because she didn't even have the OT to grow up with because it mm -hmm. would have been like the Ewok cartoons and then the the 90s, the dark times, really, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. She had the special editions just like you did, Jerry. So like she was right. like she was 17 then when the special editions were coming out. So like you were a lot younger. You were like what? You were like I was I was uh like nine I'm trying to think in around nine. Yeah, I was like yeah. right there in that so know, uh, to 12 when the Phantom Menace came out. So yeah, but um yeah, because she would have been was, like 21. That was an interesting time, an interesting time to grow up with star wars like to become interested in star wars right yeah yeah so like she also grew up with like kung fu you know films and mm. 80s movies that were campy so like we're, we're in a really interesting area to see a story develop because favreau has as even stated on like you know he did not like return of the jedi he did not like the ewok so like we are getting right you know what I mean? we are getting some pretty cool perspective uh, in, a, in terms of a star wars creator that's kind of I would say more so an outcast compared to everyone else that has worked on star Wars. And I want to, I want to look up because I don't know the exact definition, but an acolyte is this an acolyte is a person assisting the celebrant in a religious service or procession. Okay. An assistant or a follower. That's an acolyte. So mm. I, I never really understood what that word deeply meant. And like, it may be in a mythological sense. We can look it up. Uh, one who assists a member of the clergy in liturgical services by performing minor duties. One who attends and assess, uh, or assists a leader. Follower, examples, a lawyer arrived with one of her acolytes, an eager young attorney who had recently been hired by the firm. Interesting. Acolyte meaning mythology. Well, and you you see, I mean, just looking from its the way it's kind of used within pop culture and things like that, and, you know, even like things uh, like, Dungeons and Dragons or things like that. Yeah. It's typically like it feels more like a uh a cultist. Exactly. Kind of, uh vibe kind of a thing. Yeah, I think it's a great term and I really didn't know the deeper meaning behind it, but I uh yeah, I I'm very interested to see what we could get out of a show like this that's more force heavy, more Jedi heavy, uh more leans towards something that I think we've been kind of missing, you know, uh, mm -hmm. like I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. I lie. Ahsoka was very much that Ahsoka really was that quite a Ahsoka lot. Ahsoka had a lot of that. Yeah. But it was, it, which it, it didn't hit for everybody, which is no. fine. Um, but, but it, yeah, it absolutely had those vibes. You're right. But it was with a familiar character. Whereas with this could be with unfamiliar characters. So I, uh, Ooh. Yeah, Brian. I like Brian. Hold on, Brian. Yeah, Brian's thing right here. I don't know if you want to look at it. So it could be yeah. uh, an outsider who's exhibiting darkness and is killing Jedi, and the Je the acolyte is a Jedi who gets entranced and begins to fall. That is beautiful, intriguing. I love. I like that. it. I love. I that. like it. Yeah, I. Uh, I, I There's do... so many options, so many ways for them to go. Well, with this. okay. I want to say this too. Let's uh, let's take a second and see if any of familiar characters could show up. I know we said Yoda, which is really not far from happening. I'd imagine it will. Right. I, I think that'll be a big right. moment. I don't think we'll get lightsaber swinging Yoda, but I do think we'll get small chair, Phantom Menace, contemplative, hopefully looking kind of different. You know what I mean? A little bit like Man, whiter be, or like yellow hair. Just look back and use that uh, yeah. puppet. puppet. That, oh my God. It looks like uh, uh, – <laughs> That looks like uh, uh, Patrick Stewart from <laughs> from Next Generation. Um, I don't know, man. Was yeah, it, I, well, I mean, so this well, is 100 years. Yeah, we 100 years. Yeah, we could get um, yeah. we could get the non-human Jedi Council members that haven't shown up in the High Republic yet, yeah. because you know, again, you can always make their lifespans a lot more a lot sure. longer than ours. Yeah. Um, um, I, I there was people going like I remember there's there's a character in there that looks ke like a Keldor, mm -hmm. and I think people were like, "Ooh, is that Plo Koon? Plo Koon is that Plo that Koon? Would that would be neat if like we like Ooh. see some of them as uh, Padawans, kind of a thing would be yeah. really neat." I I um, think you know, Yoda's got of, a six pack. <laughs> well, we know we know this, which honestly might be giving a few things away. And I'm sorry if this is a spoiler, but the celebration trailer, which has has leaked, had an Amoidian in it. Um, I'm not thinking we're gonna get Newt yeah. or, or Rune Haku, but no, uh, but, but I think I think this could be the way they tie the greater conflict of the Phantom Menace and maybe the trade disputes and the things that are yeah, because if you if you've read Plagueis, they're very much set up like a pawn, like they're a pawn 
for the the Sith. You know, they're they're mm. a foil. And and I'm not look, I love Plagueis. I love that story. I would love to get Plagueis in live action. I think it could be very like it could be the last shot of this whole show in some capacity. You get immune. They could go to they could go to the um what's the moon planet? Uh uh Mutalist. I think well, I think they I think it was that, but I also well, they think go it's they go different. to Scipio. They go to Scipi. Scipio. Scipio was the banking planet. Their home world. Um, yeah. So yeah. But yeah, so they might have changed that because I think Munalist was from uh, uh, it was the, from the Gindy Tartakovsky. Clone uh -huh, you're right. That is it. Yeah. So like we, they could change it. It could, honestly, as much as we may not want that, it could not be Plagueis anymore. You know. Sure. Oh my! I would. It but be, I, it's so weird. We could go in a different direction with it. We we've never got a true visual confirmation besides the cover of those books. And, and look, I said it in my Metaclorians video. The Plagueis novel is canon at the highest level because um, James Lucino did not even have to go through Del Rey to get approval for things. They went straight to George's right hand and man, uh, Howard. Uh, God, I forget his last name, but they he was then communicate with him the entire time, and George and him talked right. about Plagueis. And I, yeah, I don't know. I I love I love that options are on the table. You know, if we want to be real. Uh, be real here with with the character you know tenebris is plagueis's master and he's a biff uh so like yeah. uh, you 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 can play around and i you know well, they, sure they could I, keep the I names and that. play around with the species you know so that's say, thing. i want i would love if they confirm some sith characters finally but or visually right. too but if they don't do it that way i'm still going to be okay with it now if like they may do something you like even more. Like that's, sure. that's the, th that's that's right, the interesting thing about this. That's There's right. potential yep. that this is like, wow, I'm glad they didn't stick to what was already written because yeah. it, this is well, this is so much more uh, uh, compelling. You know, and I maybe. said it. You know, we don't I know. said it less eloquently yesterday, so I'm gonna do my best to say it right here. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm gonna I really it. didn't help you with that either. I didn't really no. help you with that either. With the, uh, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. No, no. So. But uh, I want to say this as elo eloquent as possible. This show obviously is fronted by people that are underrepresented in Star Wars. That being people of color and people of different sexual orientations and beliefs and sexuality. Right. And, you know, truly the things they identify with. So... You've got a show that is already Boop in the chat ready well, for their hog to explode. Yes. <laughs> so you've got people that are already underrepresented in a show. Yeah. But I think I think the Trojan horse of this show genuinely could be, well, all these, you know, dude bro haters that are like, like Revenge of the Sith is my favorite and Plague is the best. This is how you Trojan horse them is you're like, well, you already were shitting on this show. This show is the ultimate reason some of these characters come into existence now now who's the right. idiot that's my that's my wishful thinking i don't think right, leslie Hanlon right. has that in mind well, but i think it's important I mean, to acknowledge that the laser eyes on her thumbnail i'm sure there's yeah. millions of them the laser eyes on oh, on they're may out, they're, they're listen, all out there throw a rock and you hit 12 but of them, you the know? second plagueis no. or a sith of that regard palpatine who gives a fuck shows up in this show it's gonna be like well Actually, I thought it was pretty good. Like it's gonna, it's gonna make it, them question. It's gonna make them oh, question. Yeah. But, uh, but, but I, I mean, we gotta, we gotta be realistic too, because like, I mean, as, as much as I would love that, me too. I, I don't know how. Like these guys are always like, listen, like I grew up in these circles because I was very religious and stuff. And there's those people there, and you did too. Like we both, you know, like you yeah. grew up Catholic, oh, I grew definitely. up Protestant. It doesn't really yeah. change because it's still religious people, and uh -huh. they kind of just go, you know, that was really good. I wish they didn't have oh, the people I don't wish. I wish I didn't know existed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> and again, speaking on that too, if I'm and again, like two cishet white men here, um. Mm -hmm. I and again we have had I hope we get an actual LGBTQ plus romance like confirmed oh, yeah. on screen in yeah. this. Not actually around. have it confirmed. Like we're dancing around so much shit. Even Ghostbusters danced around that shit. Yep. No, uh, yeah. no spoilers if you haven't seen it, but like there is like a I, few moments. It, it is telegraphed pretty heavily that it is a romantic relationship yes. between uh you know two female characters, which yeah. is great. Um, but I, I hope that they actually go that way with this, which again is gonna make the dude bros, whatever. But I 
to circle back around to your initial Trojan horse point, I think that's great. I want Me that. Too. I want yeah, that. Course. I honestly think that, you know, it could, because there are, for as many angry yelling nerds there are out there, there's people who are stuck in those groups and circles who have never gotten out of their towns Sure. When if they see something and they finally go that, that I'm glad that no one gave up on me, that I wasn't given up on and that I yes. finally got out of my comfort zone and learned yes. about the people around me and became yeah. friends with many people of many different backgrounds, sexual orientations, all kinds mm -hmm. of things. Maybe this is the thing that could get someone of out course. of that space. And I, we, this is why we need that kind of stuff. You know, I agree. We need the children's movies with the, with the representation and stuff like that. Um, Strange worlds was a great one that had like, mm -hmm. you know, an openly gay character, the first openly gay character in a Disney well, movie. I was going to say, touch that since. No, they haven't. <sighs> we should touch it. We're off it a little bit, but, uh, uh, but you know, like that's, it's a very good thing. It's a, like, that's my child needs that kind of stuff. Like I think exactly. children need to grow up seeing that kind of stuff. So they're yes. not as laser eye yeah. <laughs> about <laughs> a lot of shit that doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. Because it doesn't matter. Ultimately it doesn't matter if it, if it's not affecting you, then don't make it your problem. Right? Like if it, if, right. but if it's really important is let people be people, regardless if they, if they go against your beliefs and thoughts, it's not affecting you. It's not going to make your shit turn white. You know what I mean? It's not going to make anything different. It's just not. Yeah. It's just not. No. And like it's you, show... once you once you once you once you experience that and you step back and you go, I'm still here. Nothing happened. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. What yeah. have I been doing with my life? Hope oh, again, sure. a normal person, a normal person who is on the cusp of making that decision anyway, you know, yeah. but uh, go, go ahead. Where you, where you I, I was going to say, I'm just, I just, Star Trek has done so well with representation. Uh, Marvel has it not. Is, Star Wars it is, has it not. Is light years, not to, again, like not to be like <laughs> plenty about anything ahead of Star Wars. It's, it's insane. Uh, by the way, is. go watch Strange New Worlds, babies. That is so Ooh. fucking good. I'm going to drop an F-bomb. It's so fucking yeah. good. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, man beautiful no i i, I yes. just think it's i think it's excellent that that we're finally here we're we're at, at this moment let me look at the date we're uh we're like seriously a tight two months out man june uh third was it june 4th what was it june june 4th i believe june yeah. for two episode premiere uh eight episode series i believe so we're going until for the, for the love of god during pride month and again, with this is someone this is someone of the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. Um, you know, again, headlining the show, uh, uh -huh. directing the show, have two characters of the same sex kiss or something. <laughs> Just do something. For something me. for representation. Yeah, for like do it for the cis hat white me. guys. Do it for me. Do it for do it for us. We don't give like, please. Yes. Like just I would like, like do to watch something. That. Do something, yes, before Juneteenth, Eric. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I um, want to. Yeah. I want to same-sex alien species kissing. That'd be hot. Just like listen. imagine two claws. Just <laughs> no. Listen, we've know? got too much of that already in the comics. That are like, see this weird uh, amorphous creature? Yeah, these characters are weird it's and bi. ugly. Yeah, <laughs> it's the, bi. they're the gay it ones. Like it oh, likes so much all fun. yeah yeah anyway um yeah we need oh. we need to well, give us give us a, a couple human characters to represent people uh yes. for corn sakes for yes. corn flabbit give it to us corn flabbit someone no, I, uh... kiss damn geode absolutely <laughs> if ben, if listen if geode if there is a ventian in this show I will explode into I will explode into confetti. I don't know what will happen to me. I will I will just implode. I will I will self-destruct if there yeah. is a Ventian in this. Anyway, if it's geode, it's not I'm not, I'm not making it out of that episode. Well, if if we're gonna wrap up, obviously there's a lot in the pipeline. We probably that need we're to. super I'm gonna excited get my rocks for. off exactly. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Uh there's a lot to look forward to at this show. So charming. We will get more. I'm sure this show is going to be heavily marketed because it is so different. You don't have the reliance of a character like Grogu in this show to our, to our knowledge. You know what I mean? You don't have the reliance right. of certain things. So yeah, you get to, you get to watch a refreshing new 
taste in Star Wars. That's super exciting, and I, I know so we'll fun. get. Well, we it's know with time. the we know with on May fourth or May third, well, we're going to be getting some special uh some special features for this behind the phantom menace a little little preview so yeah, and yeah. i can tell you this much the freaking andor one was a whole like seven minute scene so like we got that when it yeah. came with rogue because rogue one they did a oh, yeah, of rogue I, one a month before and going to out. see that in imax yeah man oh, i remember watching it was the amazing. the part where they're dropping the the heavy machinery or whatever down the whole like so three good. minute scene it was awesome yeah so yeah, it was give fantastic. us more, give us more, Daddy, in my mouth, Daddy. So um, that means, uh, uh, so uh, Jerry, um, I guess we can close out this show with. Uh, I, we probably should. Uh, we should, so we don't ego I'm anymore. E B E B Baby E B. Baby E B. Thank okay. you. Uh, anyway, well, thank you, everyone, thank you, for everybody. joining. <laughs> Thank you, Lady Slimer, for being here. Thank you, Lady uh, Slimer, for your service. Lady Slimer actually has very nice teeth. If we're going to be honest, take a second look at that. They're nice and yeah, straight. Yeah, she, listen, I mean, compared to to regular Slimer, I don't yes. know what is that what you call him in that universe? Regular like Lady <laughs> Slimer and Slimer and penis Slimer. Um, Slimer with a dick. As <laughs> <laughs> a Slimer with a with a. Hey, he's got menorah. an ass. He's got an ass he's in the uh, ass. in the movies. So. This is this is Slimer with a clit. But anyway, <laughs> oh God, Jesus. Jesus! Why are you guys God. still watching? Yeah, uh, Why are you watching? But no, she you wore know. her retainer. She wore her retainer. Good for her. But anyway, uh, <laughs> she had her. She had her. She had her. Uh, she was so hog her. Slimer. <laughs> oh. Hogs having me fart. I'm not what do you got to say about that? Boop made me fart. Boop made you fart? Yeah, well, it was he's just gonna, He's going to be laughed. going off for like the next five minutes. <laughs> I farted. What's that? You want to do it again? Laugh. You farted? Why? No, I, I'm just saying I laughed because I farted. Well, it's both. Boop made me laugh, then I farted, then I laughed again. <laughs> you laughed because you farted. That yeah. Was an <laughs> that was a Jackson Pollock painting. Anyway. He's going to keep going off. Anyway, Jerry. Um, he, until he falls asleep, he, we will every, keep going. Uh, Every Thursday, come hang out with us. Jerry, tell me more about you, and we can wrap this damn thing up. Can you hear him snoring? He's yes, snoring he's finally. Snoring. For the love of God. He's he's he's, he's, de he's dead. <laughs> he's the EP um, one. He's EP. He's EP. Uh, what, what did you ask me? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, plug your plug your stuff. In Lady oh, well, mouth. Uh, go check out the latest episode of The Blathering with Ken Knapsack because I told a UFO story you guys have, if you've listened to the show, you've heard probably three times. Mm -hmm. um, Bob Hutzel opinion? Sure. Um, I think his mustache is great. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, follow me and on uh, Twitter at the Cannon Junkie. Follow Scotty at the Scott Jero. Follow right. the Bombedcast at bombedcast and uh yeah i gotta oh hey go uh go check out um ionized bastards uh, we're gonna be recording a new episode i think next week and so is it listen we're we're ticking right down to that finale i know it's a little oh. the release schedule is like spread out a little bit but you know hey listen we've got lives we got to do what we got to do and stuff but That's we right. still want to make stuff for you wonderful people we want to make it for you we want to make in your mouth. But anyway, yeah, thank you for watching this evening. I look forward to more Star Wars centric content coming over the next couple of weeks. We plan on doing a lot of Phantom Menace stuff more than likely leading yeah. up to the screenings and after the screenings because we want to celebrate the movie that kind of brought us together. And of course, is the main theme of our mascot and things that we love. Absolutely. Yeah. Franchise. Just say we got like so, uh, our lovable friend. Uh, John there Lee. he is. Our sweet no. buddy. But uh, anyway, uh, Jerry, can I do the state bomb ad? Is that okay? Am I, can I absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, do we want to do, do a uh, an existential vent before we leave or something here too? Oh, yes, please. We good. Hold on. Hold on. And release. Ah! Stay bomb. Did you say impossible? <gasps> Pasquale? Only kidding, Chucky. I've changed my tune because I finally thought of a possible dream that we can all share. What, what is that? Pasquale? 
It's a dream about a world when nobody is poor or sick or hungry. Oh, now that's a dream we can make come true. I'm gonna make a change for once in my life. It's gonna feel real good. Gonna make a difference. Gonna make it right. As I point up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the street with not enough to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see them?